known each other for a few years, but this is actually the first time we're working together. Yes, and yeah. it's so exciting yeah. and to be able to sing your music finally and to be able to, you know, make the space to, to do so. I'm very grateful for that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, it was like super exciting when this opportunity came up and um, I was like, oh yeah, Maria, she'd be great. And so like, um, everyone loved you and so um, we were happy to bring you on for it, so yeah. Um, and also with these two songs, because like, um, I feel like these two songs are sort of like my soprano calling card songs because uh, they represent kind of my style the best because like for example like at the dead sea which is the first song we recorded um whenever someone asks me for a piece of vocal music no matter what style if it's opera or art song i send them this piece because i feel like it represents a lot of elements of my style and um these texts really speaks to me a lot so uh because uh my parents spent a lot of time at the dead sea together before um they got married and in the final part of the song, when it's very reflective, it's I have interpreted that as my mom reflecting about my dad after he passed, uh, passed away from lung cancer, which happened five years ago. So when I got the text uh, two years ago, I immediately like heard like the whole sea and the ocean and stuff. And so it's like very like, and again, like sort of like the, the song about the whale that Melody the Roar called, which Brian saying, it's like the ocean and the water are like really big news for me, so yeah. It's so beautiful. When I heard the song, I was like, this is just so, you know, there is a kind of like a glory to it. There is like glory and something mystical about it, something beyond life. And, yeah. you know, when you shared about uh, your dad passing, which I'm, I'm very sorry about that, um, I, I was like, okay, this is very, you know, this is a beautiful way to, to commemorate your, your father. So. Thank you. Yeah, it was very, it was a very introspective um, time for me just to like write it and just, yeah, to just kind of explore it also because it's a very metaphorical text and it allowed for a lot of room in like tone painting and stuff and it's like very, so it's like very fun because it's almost like in the piano part, because you were talking about this when we were like rehearsing it, like, you know, like the, the voice is always like very present throughout, like it's almost like keeping the whole thing together and the piano part, you know, it comes in and out like waves with like the blended paddles, the cluster of chords that are rolled and all of like the counterpoint energy is kind of it's kind of like swimming through like the dead sea or you're kind of like wading in it which is like was kind of like the point of it yeah that's it's just gorgeous and you know you know yeah i felt also i, I want to share that uh, your music is just so well written for the voice oh, thank you. incredibly easy in a good way you know to sing through it because it feels like right for the voice it doesn't oh. feel that you know after i sing your songs i I cannot sing anything else, you know, yeah. if you feel, you know, like as you're singing Bel Canto, so it's, you know, you manage to write music that is meaningful and beautiful and with your message, but at the same time, you don't compromise in the beauty of the voice and I admire that, oh. I respect that a lot. First of all, thank you so much for saying that, that means a lot. Um, second of all, you mentioned Bel Canto, so I'm like a huge Bel Canto nerd, which like, I don't know if a lot of people know, so like, I grew up like listening to it because my, so my teacher had like all the old like, you know, famous Bel Canto and also not so famous Bel Canto operas like on like the CDs and you know, that, Sills, Caballé, Cala, Sutherland recorded, so I like, I listened to those and like the way I like first became acquainted with the operas was like, I would like take the cassette books and follow like the translations while they were happening and just like listen to the audio like for fun yeah. um so like so a lot of bel canto rep is really in my ear when i write just because i think of because I, I i feel like it's very it feels very natural to me when i hear that repertoire and when i hear it sung um so in my music i always like to think about being idiomatic you know because it's you know you have to know how to write for the voice and that rep i feel like does it like better than anything else for like teaching a composer how to because you like really understand like how the voice moves how it functions and like you know to keep the voice moving through the different uh th the range of the voice and stuff you know and like also how it can be used like emotionally like there's a lot of things that i think are really useful for it so um and so like i always even even when it's like not like oh it's not racine and but it's still it's like that that just like the vocalism of very I'm like very, I'm very much like a voice first composer, like always, like it's never like, so I'm glad that comes through. <laughs> it does, it does. Um, I think in both songs, in Yellow and in I, the Dead Sea, it feels, you know, it feels just <clears throat> comfortable, it feels right, it doesn't feel, you know, stretchy or you're like, you have to just figure out a new way of singing, like all of a sudden because of the music. And, and that's really beautiful because, you know, nowadays, 
you know, we want to explore as many textures as possible as you do, you know, you're exploring the yeah. textures of the sea, textures of, of feelings and yeah. emotions through relationships, yet you don't have to kind of like use the voice in an ugly way, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I agree, and also with Yellow, like, um, with that song too, I, <clears throat> I also was super influenced by like, um, Barber and sort of like it was almost like an Appalachian kind of like Americana vibe with it within that and so I kind of just brought that to the table because that song was about um, a former partner whatever who like really hurt me <laughs> and it was a very it was a it was a song about a very chance encounter and it's even though it has all this kind of um, amorous tone color it's very ardent. There's also a lot of sadness and a lot of, you really kind of see the deceit come through. So it was really fun with this performance that we did, like we talked about it, and it was really fun to kind of bring that perspective to like points in the text where you wouldn't expect it, but because you have that lived experience, you know it, you like bring it, and it kind of gives a different take on the interpretation than someone who wouldn't know that story, you know? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, when you, you know, when you, you told me about, you know, your story and, and the journey with, with this yeah. this person, you know, I was like, okay, that, that makes sense now. And, and as as you have mentioned, the, the, the meaning of the color yellow, right? Yeah, no, because he represented yellow to me in all the good and bad ways. And I'm someone who loves to write a song about a color for some reason, but it's very fun for me because I get to like, did, I get to talk about a lot of things and a uh, tangent and metaphor that I couldn't like talk about just straight on. Yeah, no, that's that's fabulous, and it gives the artist a lot of, you know, experiences that we all have had with people who were just not great. Um, but that you were like hoping that it would be great somehow, but right? it's not. I know, like men are the worst, and fuck them. But this makes for great songs, and um, yeah. at this point, I was very kind to him, as you and Brian mentioned today. <laughs> oh, you're really nice to them, and I'm like. Yeah, I I was very yeah, yeah, which was kind of funny to like when I'm like oh wow I was like really I was really still processing a lot when I was like writing them because I didn't in the moment or in the moments a little after it now I can come back to it because two years later I'm like oh I was in the moment it like takes two years for me to like come back to something and be like oh or a year you know yeah I know it, it especially when you are in the kind of like the middle of the situation yeah. You, don't know how to feel about it and that's okay yeah i think that's also why i love writing songs because it helps me like figure out how i feel about things in my life and then like helps me move on from it so then at that same way i'm kind of just only writing it for myself to get over something but then um i perform it with uh singers and the guests perform and so then it becomes a thing which is cool it's just like it's kind of like that strange process of like oh because yellow is like a very int about it's very intimate and then now it's also like another thing but also i think that's also cool because then it's like oh like other people go through this th too it's relatable you know it's something that's part of the human experience so i think there's like so song is like very special to me because in opera you, know, you deal with the dramaturgy you deal with characters you deal with so many so many things going on but in art song you get to like deal with like the in the innards of like yourself and kind of like the meanings of the text that you interpret to bring out you know, and I also think about that when I perform, you know, the piano parts in that song, because that's, I think, very important. So it's like fun to like tone paint. Yeah. 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 I, I feel it. I, you choose out the singer, you know, like you feel that motivation. Um, yeah. Which is so important for a singer in any stage of their life. Do you have any questions for me about any of the two songs? Yes. Um, like, is there a follow up song to Yellow? <laughs> oh my God. Um, so it's really funny. Um, there is, and it's in the cycle that Brian sang. It's um, so the happy. It's for bass, for it's for bass and uh, mezzo. Uh, and the, it's a song called Rainbow Song. Oh my God! So this song is like that song is really really sad. It's so um, basically. So my best friend Allison guess she was like she saw all these songs about color. She said, "I want a song about rainbow because rainbow is my favorite color. I cannot choose one." So I'm like. Okay, how am I gonna? And then so she sent me this beautiful uh, rainbow collage because she collages a lot. Um, and it's I was getting over that situation, and it came to a point where a line was drawn, and um, I had to move on. And I used the metaphor of 
rain to me like you're crying so much that you can't see the rainbow after you're done crying because you're so sad in yourself because um you just can't you're so broken so it's kind of like that situation just ended with it being very broken and sometimes in life that's how situations end and you can't control everything and that's what i learned from it that's very vulnerable and thank you for sharing that yeah Thank yeah, you. I can't believe I shared that. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> no, no, that's beautiful. I mean, like you share it. I know it, that song. That song. I haven't played that song live yet, but every I've, I've done tracks for it. It like I'm really worried that I'm like I I've cried like every time I've like heard it. It just makes me cry because I think about the emotion and it's like, um, yeah. Uh, I, I cried more than you'll ever know. Now that you're gone, I can see the rainbow. That's the, so that's like it's very yeah it was uh, it was the end of something that somehow meant nothing to you but something to me so it's like very it's very oh, yeah it's the, very, it's very, very sad it's very but also like it's very like what was nice for me is that I was able to like point it and like finally verbalize what I was like thinking and so now I'm doing that again with a, a new set of songs that kind of follow up on what Miguel was singing it's like a volume two for that but now I'm being like sassy and I'm like saying fuck you and I'm like. Yeah, and now I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm grown up. I'm gonna owe myself worth. I'm gonna tell you off, and it's gonna be sassy. So, and um, that's that's been fun because um, I've done that, but now I'm like feeling like, okay, like I feel like I you're feel like safe place. enough to do it. Yeah. Yeah, you're in the place to do that, and yeah. I'm, I'm proud of that. Thank you. Yeah, it took like it took a really long time because I was like, wait, I think I know what I have to do, but I don't want to do it, and then. Recently, I was like, you know what? I actually have to do it if I want to enjoy my life. <laughs> you just it. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, um, I feel I feel like this is what's been great about this project is I got to see the journey of where I've been the past few years, and now that I'm writing a lot of new material, I get to see where it's going, which is really exciting because then it's like kind of building like a a repertoire of sorts and like and it's. And it's something that I totally own, even though I don't feel that way anymore about those situations because it kind of, it makes you who you are, you know? Yeah. It's the good and the bad. And I think of a real um, poem that I recently set, um, and it talks about how, so it's because Rilke is very into religion, um, and I'm, I'm not personally religious, but what moved me about the poem was that um, you, um, God, um, <clears throat> God created the universe and but God does not know about life itself. He only created it, and you yourself are the only one that know it, and you, there's no good, there's no bad. It's just all part of life. The beauty and the pain, which is the climax of the poem. Um, so that's kind of how I view it. It's like, oh, the beauty and the pain, like all these experiences, they're not bad, they're not good, they're just life, and they're just, I'm just documenting them. That's Which a, is, it's a form of therapy. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a, It's like musical therapy and it's cathartic. And so that's kind of like, that's been my um, rule of thumb, that real cool thought of, oh, it's not good, it's not bad. It's just life, you know, and just moving on and doing that, especially now as things reopen. And I don't know. It's, but it's crazy, but this is this has been really fun and I'm glad we got to do it. I am glad too. And I, I thank you so much for having me and... Thank you for sharing this with me. I, I take it and, you know, in my own journey, I will just, you know, I feel like it has added to it. So Aww, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.
So we just recorded two songs mm -hmm. for um, my sessions with Core. Um, two beautiful songs. Thank you. Yes. yes, and Callie was in the audience. Oh, and lovely. And now she's in the after show. Yes, yeah, she's for, a star. Yes, yes, it's all about it's all about her. These songs, <laughs> no, they're not. Um, so, um, so these two songs um, that we did are uh, Melody of the Rourke Wall and In My Mind, and they come from a set I wrote last year called Happy, mm -hmm. which was uh, kind of my journey with mental health from the ages of 17 through 25, and kind of what it meant to me with everyone telling me to be happy and cheer up, and kind of what does that mean in the context of everything, and what it meant for that time, you know, with me coming out, my dad dying, and just growing up, and mm -hmm. moving to New York, and kind of moving out on my own. So mm -hmm. it was me just kind of writing about all the sadness, me being told to be happy and kind of what it means to me. So um, I think it was really fun for me to do this project because first and foremost, I've never done these in person. It premiered virtually over the pandemic yeah. on my YouTube series. So it was really fun for me to like actually like respond in real time to you breathing and stuff. Like instead of me being, being like in my apartment, with my iPhone, imagining what it sounds like on a Isn't track. Isn't that great to right? be playing music, making yeah. music with another person again? Yeah. Um, do you have any questions for me about the song? Well, I mean, I, so I guess one of the things that really interested me was, um, I've always been fascinated with whales. Yeah. Yeah. And, I've, and I myself have, you know, over the years struggled with a great deal of like acute anxiety disorder, yeah. which, you know, often oftentimes is... Um, depression can be a result of, yeah. of having anxiety. And so I want, I guess I was thinking about the text and thinking about the story behind it. And I, and I was wondering how did you, how did the bailing whales read depression, depressive for you? Um, so it was kind of, where'd you get, how'd you get there? So if I wasn't a musician, I'd be a marine biologist mm -hmm. studying whales um, because I, they were my, they were my obsession when I was younger. I loved them, I read up on them. I knew more than the first grade teacher did um, on whales, and I know this because I gave a correct answer about sperm whales, and she said, no, they eat a lot of fish. And I was like, no, they eat giant squid, and they dive like, really far down to do it. And, sh and she's like, no, that's not right. And I'm like, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that, no. Uh, she but, needed to be right. But I'm, I'm just like, so um, I've always wanted to write a song about whales. I just never have. Um, because I just, it kind of is like, I'm a musician now and it's my way of expressing my love for it. And I studied uh, biology in school, um, a lot of biology, um, as part of my music degree, like credits. So I, mm -hmm. I could almost have done a bio, bio minor, but I, oh, wow. I didn't. So, uh, but, so I, for one of my final projects in school, I wrote uh, pieces uh, based on songbirds, song, a bird song, which I had um, 
after I had studied like the neurobiology of bird song and kind of what it means for behavior. So anyway, long story short, I really love like biology and like all its interpretations. And for whales, um, I think because um, we had the weight of the world on our shoulders last year in terms of sadness with everything going on, mm -hmm. socio-politically, personally, everything. I mean, everyone was going, and that I wanted something that kind of expressed the immensity of that sadness. And they're the largest mammals on the earth, like the, the blue whales. You know, is the largest mammal on earth. So, so um, the physical size, yeah, of the, of the whales and the depth of it, which yeah. is also why it's for base. I think just to evoke that because it's coming down from a place from you know, you know, deep in the ocean or yeah. deep. Kind of, yeah, big you know. body. Yeah, just yeah. it's there, and it's just sort of moving. And we don't know a lot about them too, about kind of what a lot about what they do, you know. So we really have a lot of so much information. So it's kind of a mystery, and sort of that's also what the song's about because there's a lot that's unknown. And I hope for a better tomorrow. Kind of is like the catalyst for the songs. The song cycle about like okay now we're gonna actually talk about why everyone's saying that and why everyone thinks they need to be happy. Yeah. And then it talks about then it goes. In the exact opposite direction so it kind of sets up the cycle and the opening motif that I have in the piano part is sort of like uh, comes back um, and is reprised like a light motif throughout that's kind of representing the um, that acute sadness yeah uh, that just pops up um, when I talk about mental health grief stuff like that yeah yeah, so it's very metaphorical, but it's based on some a very true love with the actual biological points of whales. But it has that has a little less to do with the song. I also think like when I think about the whales, when I think about the ocean, I think of blue, sadness and blue. Yeah, there's so many of, of that emotion that, that, that ties in. So when it comes to in my mind, yeah, I found this to be. I totally get it. I think you. I count myself as a forgiving person, but I think you're far more forgiving than yeah. I am. Um, I thought the piece is absolutely, absolutely beautiful, and I love the way you you see uh, textually and also musically how you you sort of are. I feel like you're giving this person, this emotionally violent person, as I see it, um, a positive send off, almost as if you hope whatever healing they need to have in their life happens, even though they left you with this pain. Yeah. It's very big of you. Thank you. Very yeah. Michelle Obama of you. Thank you. Yes, very, very <laughs> much so. Like, you, when they go low, we go high. We go high, right. Yeah, exactly. Obviously. Yeah. No, that was absolutely... Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly... No, I was... Um, I honestly also... I love... What I love about exploring what I did in Happy is that I didn't... I, I'm someone who loves music, and it's not just based on one genre, so, you know, I'm a classical composer, but I also love pop, I love musical theater, I love rock music, alternative rock, and I really wanted to, like, the first half is very classical sounding, like Melody of the Rourke Wall, but then in my mind, you have almost a crossover where it's an art song mixed with almost like a sad rock song. Yeah, like and a, this is the national anthem yeah, the, with the rehearsal the other day because I love them and also you mentioned that. Yeah, and then, you know, and I can actually hear that. Yeah, the color yeah. of the voice is yeah. like very much that, you know, and just because uh, the lead singer has that, and also just like really kind of, it just kind of has like, also this like kind of crunchy chords, but yeah. also just, and it sort of has like a, not a regular chord pattern, but it has like a chordal structure that like is loops around where you, all of these kind of emotions come across. And it's, so that was something I really enjoyed exploring because, you know, I really got to like be like, you know, fuck it, I can, I can write, you know, something like that. I don't have to be worried about whether I get judged for it. Because yeah. I think what is the problem with new music is that we're so, we're so into art music that we forgot about the actual craft that goes into the art. And that involves a lot of like, an eclectic array of influences yeah. and you know we have a lot in the modern day that we should use and that can go into classical art song which yes. this is very much Absolutely. you know so that was I, like very fun for me to do yeah i really feel that that comes that shines through in your music especially because i feel like a lot of contemporary uh composers are too uh too keen on uh sort of like experimentation yeah. and um get lost in like writing for the voice and that and so when it comes to your music I feel like there's this tricky music sometimes there's all these other um, different genre that influences the way you compose the, the piece but also you make sure that the vocal line is singable yeah it's healthy for the for the voice yeah. and, it, and it's singable it's, yeah it's fun to sing yeah right? which yeah. isn't Thank you. which is not, isn't often the case with contemporary music I find I find that a lot of contemporary composers know absolutely nothing about the voice or fa 
and they just write in ways that are um, not as exciting and fun and healthy. Oh. So I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah, no, I also see that a lot because I, I coach a lot of new opera, and so I have to also work with yeah. just on a lot of things about how the vocalism comes across because it is it is very tricky. Um, and we mentioned Fach, which what's funny for me is that I kind of reject the Fach system. I say I don't write for Fox, I write for specific singers. So like, because you know, like each singer in a, in a Fach can have most of the strengths that are associated with that repertoire, mm -hmm. but not everyone has all the strengths, and some of them right. might have strengths, you true. know, you know, in other, in a few others, or like do things, you know. So I like when I write, I try to always write, you know, for a specific singer, and so. Um, for um, the song cycle, I wrote it for a specific, uh, for my friend Andrew, mm -hmm. who did it. And then the mezzo ones, I wrote for a bunch of different mezzos um, who commissioned a song. And it was, I just wrote it for their voice. I listened to what, what it sounds like and then where it like, lives the happy place. And it's just mm -hmm. because it, you really, if you make it about it being a person that's singing it and less about, oh, uh, category in a row on a table with a voice type mm -hmm. that would do it, mm -hmm. that also I think helps for me as an artist realize, oh, it's a person singing it vocalizing it, you know, bringing that to the table, and so, um, the, so I really appreciate you saying that about the East, because I really try to make sure, you know, that I, uh, it's coming across that way, and I, uh, um, my teacher, Jason Eckert, always taught me to write things in the most straightforward, um, communicable, communicable way possible, mm -hmm. so that you're communicating your ideas. I just yes. made up a word, communicable, no, communicating, <laughs> that communicates your ideas, um, so yeah. Which is uh, well, that definitely it definitely uh, comes across. I mean, like I really enjoyed singing the pieces and learning them. Um, and I'm excited for everyone to hear um, your um, performances because it's really great. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to actually sing with you. It was fantastic. It's beautiful music, and I'm really, um, really pleased that you write your own, your own text as well. Yeah, I, I, I do. So I do a mixture. So I do write my own text and some and um, libretti and. And I also work um, very frequently with um, uh, librettist and director B. Goodwin. So okay. um, she's been my collaborator for the past six years um, oh, wow. on many things. And I worked with other I worked with other um, writers as well. And it's been always super fun. Um, I love to like I love like to put my brain into what the writer's words are, and then kind of figure out what they're doing. And it's really fun for me to kind of collaborate like that. And then when I write my own stuff, it's Especially with art song, it's like very diaristic. Okay. So I'm like processing what's going on around me in like real time. Yeah. And sort of like, so with happy, that's what I was doing. And now, does the melody come first and then the text, or does the, the text come and then you build the melody? It really depends. Um, with this song cycle, um, with these two songs, I had the um, text first. Okay. Um, and I went through several drafts of it in my mind because it, I had to evolve how I thought about the situation. Because yes, you said I'm a very forgiving person. Yeah. However, now yeah. I'm writing more like more. I'm writing like a lot of new songs, um, and they're more sassy and more like big middle fingers, like fuck you. In, and, in the moment, right? Oh, it's very fun. This yeah. sounds like a very healed post, you know, it, yeah. post. Um, sadness, kind of. Oh, like. sadness. Yeah, I think very much so. I it think sounds like you've done a lot of healing when you've written this. You I, know? I think so. I think I just also. Well, it's also about. I mean, in my mind, and the songs I'm writing now are about two very different situations, but they're also very similar in that I had to like, I had to like speak my truths, and I also had to like. You know, I had to like enjoy my fucking life again. Yeah. <laughs> Which kind of I was. It's not that I wasn't, but it was just like a very like toxic place, like in my mind. Literally, literally, literally in my mind. What's that like? What's that like? <laughs> um, ask my therapist. Don't ask. Actually, um, oh, thank you. but um, no. <laughs> but so, so it's like, <laughs> yeah. So it's sort of like moving on from that. I'm kind of like just being more emotionally honest and just like, just kind of like, you know, this is how I feel now, and I don't really care. And also, like, you know, it's I try to also write the songs like where you know, especially for like. Um, the ones now, but also for these two that you sang that like, you know, they're relatable to other people, like in other situations, because yeah. it's like, it's very much my personal narrative and it's very diaristic, but also like it's, it's talking about relatable themes because we've all had those experiences before, whether Absolutely. or not we like loved whales growing up or not, but like dealing with like a looming depression yeah. or a looming sadness or something. And then within my mind where you kind of have like someone who you sort of make peace with who never made peace with you. Mm. I think those are very universal. So like, you know, 
they're still going through that, but it's it's fun. And I think I'm growing up, which is good because like I these were a year ago, and when I was 25, and now I'm 26, so yeah. now it's like, oh, I'm a little bit more mature, late 20s. Woo woo. It's amazing how that happens. I know, right? Time, right? I know. It's like one year later. Well, if you haven't come out of the pandemic more mature in many ways, or more um, self aware and healed. Um, yeah, or then with, you yeah. wasted your time. We're never gonna get that back. You know? Yeah, or yeah. It sounds like you did a lot of like you know the the work that is necessary to, to move forward and fully evolve as a human being. I'm trying. Uh, an artist during that time, trying. and it shows through your music. So. Thank you. It's an honor to sing it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Expandable 